<clears throat> and judge my exposure as well as my focus on. Bell, please stop typing. Thank you. <laughs> and that is just throwing me off right now. That is really bright for outdoor use. Also, please stop clicking. <laughs> Did it already the whole entire time? <laughs> clicking the whole time. Yo, what's up? It's been exactly a year since I bought the EOS R5 for my video production company as well as photography needs and I sadly have to announce that from this day on I will retire the EOS R5 for video production. There's a lot of things that bother me about this camera. A lot of these I have already touched on in my R5 for video review about eight months ago and well those things haven't changed but maybe the way of me shooting has changed a little bit so i am retiring the ears r5 and in this video i will tell you all the reasons why i'm not using the canon ears r5 for video anymore more on that after the intro my name is damien cooper and welcome to monkey pixels Before I start telling you all the reasons why I'm not using the R5 anymore, take everything I say with a little bit of grain of salt because this is complaining on a very high level. But for me, a very busy filmmaker that shoots way more than I care for at this time, I really don't have the time to deal with the shortcomings of this camera. You can still make that work and these are really specific problems, sometimes just for me and other people will not have an issue with this. Again, like you can make this camera work. This camera is an amazing tool and it's better than all of the cameras that have been there before this camera. So again, take this with a grain of salt, but now let's actually start with all the points why I'm not using the R5 for video anymore. So when it comes to using the R5 for video, I basically have three categories that I use this camera in. And that is commercial work when I am directly dealing with my client. So I'm shooting a commercial or a documentary or anything directly for my client. I'm shooting and I'm editing. And that way I have a lot more flexibility when it comes to the shortcomings of the Eurus R5. Let's say I'm shooting a multicam interview and the camera overheats, then I can just quickly switch to 4K non-HQ for example, or I can let the camera rest for a little bit. And there's other different things that I will touch on that I can find a workaround on. The file sizes, the hard to edit files, I can transcode, the audio solutions, all of this I will touch on later. But bear in mind, when I'm doing the editing, I can just work around of these issues. But there's also a second category that is very dominant in my career and has been picking up more and more and that is me being hired as a DP for other production companies or other directors. And here that is a totally different story. Just try to explain to your director that we need to take a 10 minute break because your camera just overheated or that he has to transcode all the H.265 files into ProRes but he can't use Handbrake but he has to use Final Cut because there's some weird gamma shift going on and otherwise he can't edit those files. That is not a good look for you as a DP. So using the EOS R5 when shooting for other people has been kind of a no-go for me. So in that kind of field, I've hardly ever used the EOS R5 because I just couldn't make it work. The third category is as a YouTube behind the scenes camera. And for this, it actually worked fairly well. There's still better options that I found in my workflow, but it's still a great BTS camera. And that is actually something that I might still use this on from time to time if all the other cameras that I have are busy. But those are the three categories that I will talk about today. So all of the points I'm making are not ranked and I'm just randomly bursting them out. So don't think that one thing is more important to me than the other. So let's start with the overheating. Yes, overheating is still an issue. I've been shooting a lot with this over the winter and it has not been a problem for me. Now it's summertime here in Vienna and it's really hot. And I use this camera a lot for interviews as a B camera and it has overheated on me a couple of times now. Actually, we've just finished our C70 Richter video and we've been using this camera because I was showing the C70 so I couldn't use this as my second camera and the camera overheated in 4K HQ so I had to switch to 4K non-HQ. 
So yes, the overheating is still an issue. Before I was mostly using this as a B-roll camera, shooting for five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time. So it hasn't been a problem for fashion videos, for a lot of the commercial work. But when using this as a camera for interviews and you wanna get the highest quality out of it, and that is the 4K HQ or the 8K RAW, then overheating is an issue. No, I'm not using an external recorder with it and I will touch on why I'm not doing this. So wait for the comments that, hey, you can solve a lot of your problems with an external recorder for later when I'm finished with the video and then just start triggering and put all your comments down in the comment section below. Number two why I'm not using the Eros R5 for video anymore is the hard to edit files. We have a mixture of M1 Max as well as Intel Max here in the office. And on my Intel iMac, the R5 files are just a bitch to edit. I still can't really look at those. I can't really edit those. In some of the codecs it works, in some of them it doesn't. On the M1 Max it actually works fine, but having to transcode them just takes a lot of time that I don't have and I don't want to spend on transcoding. So still, the files are a problem. Again, when shooting for myself, that is something that we can deal with. We just use the M1 or we are just going to transcode. But when shooting for other people, another production company, where I'm basically just offloading the files on set for my client and they can't edit these files, that is a problem. Number three is the audio. It doesn't have time code. I'm doing a lot of multicam shooting with different kind of cameras on set with external audio recorders and time code is something that is very, very clutch when using different kind of cameras. When shooting my own video for my clients and I'm editing everything, there's a great workaround solution with the tentacle sinks. And I do have a review on my channel about time code in general as well as the tentacle sinks. And you can basically just fake time code with these, with the EOS R5. And Yes, there is a bit of a workaround and an extra step to take to sync everything up in post, but it does work fairly really well and doesn't take too much time. Again, time is money and when working for other people and I'm just giving them these different kind of files, I can tell them, hey, you need to go to this website, download that and then you can just put it in, sync it. It doesn't work. They need actual native time code. The years R5 doesn't work with that. So audio is a problem for me. C-Log2, that is also an issue that I have with the Canon EOS R5. All of my other cameras, the Canon C300 Mark III, the Canon C70, they all shoot C-Log2 with Cinema Gamut. Yes, it is a big step up with the newest firmware that you can shoot in C-Log3 with Cinema Gamut now, and it's way easier to match than it was before, but it's still not perfect, and it does take a little bit of time to matching these. And I actually have a LUT pack on my website that it makes it a lot easier to match all of these cameras perfectly in post, and that is what I use most of the times, but it still takes a little bit of extra time, and again, time is money, so if I can just not have to match anything by just shooting with the same cameras, the same sensors, it just makes my life a little bit easier. Speaking of the missing C-Log2, there's also a big difference when it comes to dynamic range on the EOS R5 compared to the C70 or the Canon C300 Mark III. And I always hate it to having to choose between, hey, do I want to have a good autofocus, a small body, or do I want to have better dynamic range? It's just something that I really don't want to miss. And the same matching issue goes on as well. When matching the Canon EOS R5 with the Canon C300 Mark III, in a lot of situations, it becomes immediately apparent that the EOS R5 has way less dynamic range than my other cameras. So that is something that always bothered me and it still does. So if I can switch that out to a camera that has the same sensor as my other cameras and I have more dynamic range, that is definitely something that I want to go for. Another issue I have with the EOS R5 is just the small size body. It's really hard to rig that camera out and I do have a full video on rigging out the EOS R5 and I did my best to find a nice and easy rig to walk around with but the lack of V-mount support or batteries which you can power your monitor as well as your camera with and just the sheer unbalance 
of the front heavy lens with the external monitor. It's just something that on longer shoots when shooting all day, which I happen to do a lot, I've just came back from three days of 14 hours shooting all day and I will have 15 consecutive production days starting next week where I'll be shooting a lot of handheld documentary style shooting and having a camera rig that isn't 100% balanced you'll immediately can tell after one or two days of shooting when the entire rig isn't perfectly balanced. So that is something that a lot of people underestimate but with a tiny body like this even if you rig it out it's never gonna be as great as a Canon C300 Mark III or any dedicated cinema camera for example. And that kind of leads me to another point and that is client's perception. If you're being hired from a production company or a director or even a direct client and you show up with a small camera that also shoots photos no matter how big you rig it out, it still doesn't look as good as if you were to come with a rigged out Canon C300 Mark III, a RED camera, a Sony FX6 or FX9. There's different kind of cameras that just scream professionality. Is that a word? Professionalism? Professionalism, that's the word. And the EOS R5 just doesn't do that. So showing up to a client that pays you big bucks to shoot their project with a small camera like this is always not the perfect fit. I know it sounds stupid, but it's actually the way things are, at least in my opinion. So showing up with a big rig and a big cinema camera is always a good look for you. Another thing that differentiates the Canon EOS R5 from an actual cinema camera is internal ND filters. And I've talked about this a lot on this channel, that a lot of my stuff is being shot in sunset and sunrise situations. So I'm always in this range between no ND and two, three, four ND stops. And having to unscrew, unscrew, or basically unscrew, screw on external ND filters, even if they're magnetic, it always is an extra step, it is a pain and a lot of the times you do have a color cast on your external ND filters which also makes it harder to match these cameras or even the same camera in the same situation later in post. Takes more time, time is money, I've said that a million times in this video. So that is not an ideal situation and I don't want to have a camera anymore that doesn't have internal ND filters. Ports. Ports is also important and I never understood why a camera that is kind of catered to professionals only has a micro HDMI port. Bell, for example, she's using the EOS R5 as her main camera right now and she destroyed about four to five HDMI cables as well as her entire HDMI port because it's just not made for professional work and rugged shooting outdoors. Same goes for the 3.5 mm headphone jack. I'd rather have XLR, I'd rather have SDI. There's a lot of ports that you don't have on a small camera like that, naturally, because it's a camera made for stilts. But again, in a professional environment, these things come really clutch and I wouldn't really wanna live without them anymore. Now let's address the elephant in the room, why I'm not using the EOS R5 with an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 5 or 5 Plus. Because I can already hear you guys typing in the background saying that this could eliminate a lot of my problems. And you're somewhat right, because it won't eliminate the overheating, it will better it, but it will definitely eliminate the stupid file codex that nobody can edit because basically every director and production company will be happy if you deliver ProRes. But I do have some issues with these external recorders and there's basically three. Number one is there's still a micro HDMI port and I don't trust those, I don't like those, but that is not my biggest issue. Another issue is that they're generally a lot heavier than a regular monitor and that makes the entire rig even less balanced and more front heavy than with a normal monitor. And three, and that is my biggest issue here, is none of those are bright enough for outdoor shooting. I mentioned it a million times, I'm shooting a lot in sunset and sunrise situations where I need a really big and bright monitor to judge my focus as well as my exposure and neither the Ninja 5 nor the new Ninja 5 Plus are working for me in that regard. So that's why I never really used an external recorder with my ears R5. So these are all the reasons why I'm not using the R5 for video anymore. And that doesn't mean that you can create amazing content with the ears R5, that you can't bring that onto a professional set or that you can't make money 
decent money with the Eurus R5 with video production. For me, I'd rather have a Canon C70 alongside my Canon C300 Mark III because it just saves me time, it's easier to work with. I also found that the C-Log2 with the conversion LUT from Canon is just easier to grade when it needs to be really quickly, especially for these YouTube videos. Whereas the Canon C-Log3 takes a little bit more time, not as much. And if you're interested in how I grade C-Log footage, there's a link down in the description below to my 30 second color grade video. And that gives you really great results with the Canon EOS R5. So check that one out if you haven't already. But overall, this is my take on the EOS R5. I will still keep it. It will be my one and only photography camera because it is still the best photography camera that I have ever used. And maybe once in a while I will also use it on a shoot, red's raining outside, maybe I'll just dump it in the water, maybe we'll use it for the YouTube channel in some kind of capacity when I need a small and light camera with a really great autofocus. But for now, in my professional kit that I will use on most of my commercial shoots, the Eros R5 is no more. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Check out our store with all of our LUTs, merchandise, as well as presets for the Canon cameras or other cameras as well. Subscribe to the channel for more and I hope to see you on the next one. Cut! And the file sizes, or basically the fate of that. I lose the whole thing again, but I snapped, so uh, jokes on you. So showing up with a big rig and a big cinema camera. Showing up with a big dig. Showing up with a big dig, just like, oh, sorry, did I had my fly open? I didn't notice, but yes, it's 25 centimeters. I'm erect. Don't cut that in there. <laughs>